Today we're going to be assembling the DAT790 Mix UHF VHF antenna from Televez and I'm going to show you all the stuff that the manual doesn't. You get very comprehensive directions with this thing, don't get me wrong, but unless you're really a wizard you're not going to necessarily be able to figure these things out without a little bit of help. Luckily that's what I'm here to give you. The first thing you're going to need to know is that you're going to need a few tools to get this thing together. It does come with a wrench but you're going to need a Phillips head screwdriver as well and if you're more comfortable using your own 10 millimeter box wrench or 10 millimeter socket you might want to use those as well. Start by assembling the two pieces of the main director by pushing them together and then bolting them in. What they don't tell you is that the bolt is intended to eat into the aluminum a little bit. The inset square part is going to actually go into the aluminum and when it's finished it's going to look flush like this. Then take the three directors and put them in this yellow housing. A little bit of WD-40 or some sort of grease is going to help you because you're going to need to slide those top and bottom ones back and forth a little bit. Make absolutely sure that the longer one is on top and that the yellow housing is facing the way that it's supposed to face. Here's a picture of the finished one so you can get an idea of what it's supposed to look like. Take this white plastic piece and feed it through all three directors. You'll notice that there's an arrow that's actually embossed into the piece there that'll help you with making sure it faces up. When you put the other white plastic piece on, actually make sure the directors are fairly close together and that the plastic piece is diagonal, kind of like what you see in this picture. See here you've got to be very careful actually. Make sure that the bottom piece is positioned right and as you can see the directors are fairly close together. Then make sure that when you lay the top piece on that it's facing the same direction as the bottom piece. It's totally possible to put this thing on upside down and then it's not actually going to fit right, it's not going to work right and you could potentially crack the plastic. When you're sure you've got it right, then screw everything together with the Phillips head screws. In this next step, place these black plastic pins into the metal clamp and then secure it underneath the antenna, making sure that you're bolted in place. You get four of these pieces in the box, two tops and two bottoms. Make sure the bottom is the threaded part and you'll be fine. Then they're going to have you take the eye bolt and the clamp assembly and put it right on that shaft. You've got to thread the eye bolt in first and then slide the whole thing onto the shaft. It's really not as hard as it looks. It might take one or two tries though. Once you've got it, secure it with the included wrench. Honestly, the 10 millimeter box wrench doesn't do as good a job as the included one in this particular case. Then they're going to have you repeat the same thing over and over again with the second set of clamps and back. Remember, place the two plastic pieces in, put it underneath, and then clamp on top, bolt in. Use the supplied wrench and you're going to be just fine. Pull the top and bottom director in two different directions in order to make sure that that white piece straightens out. When it does, you're going to hear a little click, and that's how you're going to know you've got it. Now at this point, I decided to go a little bit different from the manual, and I decided to mount onto the mast. It's a lot easier to do the other steps for assembly if you can mount onto the mast at this point. If you don't want to haul all the individual pieces up to the roof, I certainly do understand, but I found it was easier. In this step, you're going to be attaching those large reflector panels. If you take a look, you'll notice the two of the bars are closer than the rest of the bars. Those are the ones that are closest to the center of the antenna. If you do it right, you should be able to just slide them in. Once you've got it in, push down on the plastic tab and click it in place. Do the same thing with the bottom reflector. Again, slides in, then click in place. The back reflectors go in exactly the same way. The only thing you really need to know about this is that there's a plastic cap on one end, and that plastic cap should be furthest away from the center of the antenna. It's at this point that they actually have you attached to the mast. You slide everything over and tighten it up with a 10 millimeter wrench, then adjust the tilt of the antenna so it's perfectly level. They supply you with a twist-on RF connector and a weather boot. If you want to use the ones they've supplied, great. If you don't, then use your own weatherproofing and make sure that the coaxial cable it makes a nice secure fit. What they're trying to tell you here is actually that you've got to feed the cable in before you actually click the antenna module in place. If you don't, it's going to be really hard to connect. Feed it in through and between the reflectors, screw it in tightly, 
hand tight should be all that it takes. And then put it up on the rail, slide it, and click it into place. When you're complete, your antenna is going to look like this. Do make sure to follow proper grounding procedures for your area. You can get more detail about that at your local city hall. And of course, grounding supplies are available at Solid Signal. Connect the power supply unit up like you see it here. The plug doesn't go all the way in, it just looks like you see it here. The white lead on the left, that comes from the antenna. The black one on the right, if you're only using one TV, go in through the rightmost port. And I put a terminator on the center one, even though it's not necessary. It's self-terminating, but I don't like dust. Total assembly time for this was honestly, you should budget yourself 30-45 minutes. If you have somebody to help you, it's going to go a little bit faster. And it's going to take you a couple of times to get things right. I'm not going to say it won't, even with this video. But once you've got it up on the roof and got it aimed, you're going to find this is one of the most powerful and durable antennas there is. And you're going to find that that time is worth it.